This is Witchbase News for Friday the 2nd of September 2022 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...Frontier announces their targeted window for the start of console account transfers We've an update on commanders efforts to track the Thargoid like anomaly recently discovered moving near Barnard's loop and stations in the Pleiades are being daubed in graffiti. You know what to do by now. Like and subscribe remembering to click the little bell icon and select all notifications to stay informed with our future videos and to directly support the work of this channel you'll also find our Patreon linked below. Last week we began receiving reports that commanders were finding graffiti on walls and equipment in an on foot station interior in the Pleiades region. Upon investigation it became rapidly apparent that the graffiti was present in more than one starport and seemed to be centered in a bubble of systems surrounding Merope. After extensive investigation it seems that the appearance of the graffiti is, as you'd perhaps expect in the Pleiades region, linked to various opinions on all subjects surrounding the Thargoids. Thus far the community has found graffiti on walls, consoles and furniture and, as you can see on screen at the moment, it can be categorised as pro Thargoid, anti Thargoid, pro Salvation or pro Aegis. As best we can determine at the moment the graffiti is permanent, its appearance for individual commanders is, we think, linked to graphical fidelity settings meaning all commanders will likely see something, those with higher graphic settings may see more graffiti and it doesn't yet seem to be linked to any apparent system state or faction allegiance. As I've mentioned currently it seems limited to the systems surrounding Merope in the Pleiades nebula and is linked to the Thargoid issue. If you fancy taking a look there's a list of known systems and stations featuring the graffiti on screen now and if you find any examples of graffiti away from that region or of a different flavour then please let us know in the comments below. As we reported earlier in the week some surprise Thargoid high predictions late on Tuesday UK time in the general region of Barnard's loop turned up a mysterious new star in the sky in that region. As commander observations of the new object continued it became apparent that the new object in the sky was, in fact, moving. What's more it appeared to be moving toward a specific system and was very clearly not a star. That system it appeared to be heading toward was Uchor's UFJ C110. As the days wore on the now very clearly Thargoid inspired object got very much brighter and brighter until late Thursday evening. Still in interstellar space rather than in the system itself it passed by the targeted system and moved on past it headed in the very general direction of human occupied space. It's worth noting here that Rini and I were in the Uchor system at the time of the objects transit and whilst it was apparent that the game was attempting to convey the anomaly transiting between systems the displayed movement ended up being somewhat erratic which you can see on screen now and, at the point of it actually passing the star, resulted in a widespread server crash. Technical issues aside, the last few days in Elite Dangerous have been, for me at least, one of the biggest highlights this game has ever presented. We have a large, unidentified object moving at speed towards human occupied space, emanating from a permit locked region of space that we believe likely houses the Thargoids. You can see it in game when in the general region and you can hear it in the FSS scanner from thousands of light years away. It's almost certainly Thargoid in origin and it's almost certainly a direct reaction to the catastrophic events in HIP 22460 that were themselves the crescendo of around 18 months of building narrative in the game. This is all heading towards something and so far it's been nothing short of epic. 
Where the anomaly is headed next is currently being investigated. Once the community have a few more days of observation under our collective belts we should start to get a much clearer picture of the more general path it's on and obviously as more time passes we should be able to start to narrow down a list of candidate destinations for its presumed eventual arrival. What happens after that? Well that really is anybody's guess at this point. Frontier have been saying for some time that the option to copy an account save over from the console side of the game to the PC side would be made available in September and following an announcement on Thursday it appears that plan is proceeding as expected. In the announcement the team at Frontier make it clear that the current plan is to start the copy option window the week of the 12th of September. The opening of this window is subject to some forthcoming intensive testing of the system producing no show stopping problems. That testing process will start on the 5th of September. As we previously reported the Cambridge based developers of Elite Dangerous have previously produced an extensive FAQ that details the very comprehensive account copy option that is being made available to commanders on the console versions of the game following the cancellation of further development of Elite Dangerous on those platforms. I've linked to that fact below this video but one of the few things that the copy process will not be able to bring across is any remaining arcs balance. That will stay put on the still usable console version of the account. Frontier are advising anyone that wished to bring that arcs value across to spend those points on cosmetic items from the store before starting the console copy process and in a surprise and very welcome move they are giving advanced notifications of an upcoming sale on the Arc store that will allow commanders to get the most value from those arcs before the copy. As I've mentioned the expected start of the copy process will be the 12th of September but that is of course subject to change should any unexpected issues arise. The sale will be active before the window starts and the exact date of that sale will be made public nearer the time. It's great to see the company yet again pitching much more direct communication at its customers and in regard to the console copy offering they really do seem to be going the extra mile. If development cannot continue on the console platforms then a comprehensive account copy and a free copy of the base game that Frontier are offering together with a heads up on an upcoming sale on the Frontier store really is the next best thing. And further if console commanders are able to avail themselves of a game streaming service like GeForce Now and have a compatible device or smart TV they won't even need a high end gaming PC in order to run it. In case you're unfamiliar with it I've linked to Nvidia's GeForce Now website below. Much of the criticism in recent years directed at Frontier including from this channel has centred around the company's lack of open communication with its customer base. In the last year Frontier have both acknowledged those errors and promised to do better. The proof of the pudding however was always going to be in the eating and I would argue they are now very much following up on those promises on a weekly basis. Long may it continue. Have you been to see the Pleiades graffiti? Have you seen or listened to the Stargoid anomaly and where do you think it's heading? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.